Hey there, Blenderheads! This is Matt Heimlich, and welcome to the first video in a series that I'm going to be calling Shortcut. Uh, now, the name has kind of a double meaning, and that it both is a, a series of videos that are going to be a little bit shorter than my normal tutorials, um, and also that they uh, are going to represent you know little hints and tips uh, within Blender that you might not know about that will help to speed up your workflow. Uh, today, we are going to be looking at a tip here for uh, this caustic effect you see here. Now, uh, on my screen, you'll see the sphere, and uh, it's casting this nice caustic shadow, and you might think that that took uh, quite a while to render. Um, bunch of samples, but if you look, you can see the edges of the shadow are actually still fuzzy, and uh, we're only at 25 samples, and if I grab the sphere and move it around, you can actually see the effects of this uh, caustic here in real time. Um, as far as I know, this is the only way to uh, that anyone's figured out to do this so far. Uh, there was a way with the is shadow ray method, um, where uh, you could use it on flat glass objects and stuff and uh, get them to cast colored shadows um, and uh, but that was really only good for flat objects and I've kind of expanded upon that a little bit to be a little bit more robust um, there are a couple caveats for it as it stands now um, the objects that you use it on need to have actual depth so uh, things that are just like um, flat planes or like a flat plane with a displacement map applied to it do not currently work using this exact method uh, also, this only captures refractive caustics. It will not capture any kind of reflective caustics. Um, someone who's a little bit better at vector math might be able to figure that out, but uh, they're going to have to take over from me here because this is as far as I've been able to get. Anyway, it's easy to uh, look at a circle and see that it looks nice, but uh, I'll bring up a Stanford Dragon here, and you can actually see that it works fairly well with that uh, as well. You get almost instant feedback in places where you're getting these tight caustic shadows. Uh, where the light is being refracted through the glass. So uh, without any more delaying, I will go ahead and show you the shader here. Alright, here's the node setup for the shader. Um, basically it starts with a mix shader where you're mixing a glass material. Uh, and the factor for that mix sh uh, shader is the is shadow ray output of the light path node. Um, the other input on that mix shader is a second mix shader, and into that mix shader is two transparent BSDFs, one pure white, one pure black. Pure white goes into the top, pure black goes into the bottom. Um, the factor for that mix shader is using the normal value of the object. Uh, the normal feeds into this vector curves, the vector curve feeds into a color mix node, uh, and you're just using a simple mix between these two colors, and I'll go over these two right here because these are where the magic happens in this. So when you first add this vector curves uh, node, you're going to have curves that look like this, just a flat line. Um, what you want to do is give them this kind of nice tight S curve like you see here. Uh, for the X and the Y, you want to have them uh, over in this quadrant here, and then for the Z, you want to have them in these two quadrants here. So kind of uh, down here and then get this one as close as you can for, for tight caustics. Um, the other stipulation of this material is that it is not dependent on the light, which for some of you may be nice, for some of you may be kind of a hassle. Um, but I'll show you what I mean here. We'll go back into rendered view. And I will grab my emitting plane. And you'll see as I scale that and shrink it, the size of the caustic itself does not change, just the intensity of it. Um, so uh, the way that you control that is in the Z vector curve. This control point here controls how strong the caustics are. So if I drag it up, it'll kind of drop down. And this here, dragging this in the uh, x and y direction, changes the spread of the caustic. And when you get as close as possible, you get this really tight caustic underneath it. Uh, dragging this up will dull your caustic down. And dragging it below this line into this quadrant will give it different uh, degrees of strength. Um, and that's pretty much all the control that you're going to need for your caustic. Um, in this case. Uh, now when I said before that doesn't work for planes, I've had some success. 
just uh, with flat planes, just with using the x value. Um, but I, I can't get this uh, bright caustic like you'd expect in, um, in an actual render. Uh, so there is some more testing needed to be done there. And I'd love to see someone expand upon this to, to be able to cover more cases. Um, in the mix, this is uh, important for getting this brighter than white caustic color. Um, you're going to mix two colors. Color 2 is going to be just a standard 0.8 white. But color 1 is going to be uh, above a 1. It's going to be, uh, I found that about 3.25 works really well to give bright caustic colors, but you can play with that value to, um, to, to get the look that you want. Uh, changing that, I'll give you a look at what it looks like. If I put it to like 1.5, you can see you get this really dull uh, highlight from the caustic there. And turning it back up restores that. Um, this, as it's set up here, works well for most of the objects I've thrown at it so far. Uh, but I'm going to show you a case here where uh, a couple additional parameters need to be changed in order for it to work well. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that sphere off. And I'm going to turn on this object here, which is kind of a uh, meant to simulate water, if you will. Um, now, rendering that as is, you'll see it does not quite work as well. You just get this reflective surface and then kind of pure black underneath. Now to get those to show through, you need to go down to this black transparent and bump it up to about 0.65, maybe even 0.7 um, to get these caustics to show through. And obviously these are not as strong. I haven't yet worked out a way to get these uh, to be highlighted the way that the others are. But um, for now, this is a good way, especially for animation, where it's not a, that important that they be accurate. Um, this is a good, fast way to get this done. As you can see, this is 3 seconds, 25 samples um, on my GPU, and uh, you can already see where these highlights are coming through. Um, so this is a pretty handy material to have in your material library for uh, faking caustics when you don't want to wait for all these samples to clear for actual caustics. Uh, so. That is the material. Uh, I will post a link to it as well under the video. And uh, yeah, hopefully this has been helpful for you. Um, as always, leave a comment. Let me know what I'm doing well. Let me know what I'm not doing well. And uh, please like and subscribe if you'd like to see more tutorials. Thanks.